Welcome to Drift Guitars, my name is Chris, behind the camera is Matt. As always, and today we are revisiting an old subject, which is the electric guitars that Matt and I launched. But if we back up and we think about it, that very first guitar that we uh, we delivered was Rhett's guitar, and it feels like that was like three weeks ago, but it was actually at Summer Nam, so that puts it six months ago in July of 2021. And uh, a little bit of a cliff's notes on how this all happened is obviously I hired Matt a year ago and a big reason why we brought Matt in was to launch a line of electric guitars coming from a man who's always played acoustic, always built acoustic, and only done a little bit of electric guitar playing um, with my band. So I wanted to bring somebody in who could help me kind of sort this out. We consulted dozens and dozens of really amazing electric guitar players and we put out our first prototype as well as our first, what we thought at the time was our fully fleshed out version of the guitar called the title caster. We'll put a link to that video here from when Rhett Scholl took delivery of that guitar. Um, but since then, uh, we have been building many more of them, taking orders. We took a lot of orders and we're actually working on our second batch now, which is our biggest batch yet of 20 guitars. And uh, we do thank everybody who has ordered these things. It's been really awesome. but. A big reason why I gave Rhett that guitar was to help me better understand how I could build a better guitar, knowing from my experience as an acoustic builder that when you think that you've got something dialed in, that there's actually a lot of road still in front of you before it really is dialed in. And one of the very first things that Rhett said when he got the guitar was that he loved his resonance and how much sustain that it had. The only issue that he really could point to out of the gate, and this is something that I never would have noticed was actually that this neck sat too high inside the pocket, um, meaning that basically the part where the fretboard is was actually sitting too high above the body of the guitar, which didn't really 
wasn't something that I noticed out of the gate and would wondered why that would actually be an issue. But the reason why it's an issue is because what happens is that you end up with a really steep break angle of the string across the saddle of the guitar. And coming from an acoustic background, that's actually something that we aim for. We want a nice st uh, steep break angle across that saddle. But on, a on electric guitars, it's a different animal, as we all know. Well, I didn't know. And so what we've actually ended up doing on the guitars following Rhett's is we routed that pocket deeper and got this neck really dialed in. And as Rhett is, he was right on this one. And it's been amazing on how just that little bit of a difference by dropping that down, changing the brake angle across the saddle, it's made this guitar feel so much more um, playable. The I don't know if, about you guys, but if you ever played a guitar that kind of sometimes feels just tight and wound up and sprung, um, these guitars don't have that anymore and they all feel great. Um, we have built guitars um, for clients that had nines on them. Rhett's guitar had nines on it. Um, all the way up to guitars that have 11s on them. And regardless of the string gauge that we've put on them with this new um, geometry that we have on here, they just feel super, super good. So just one of the things that we've kind of made better. Now, the second thing that so many people commented on, and I think we'll uh, continue to always have naysayers about, which I get, is the fact that we don't have truss rods in these guitars. They are truss, lo truss rod free. And that... Uh, is something that's different for sure. I know that for me, even for me, it kind of goes, well, how are we supposed to adjust the guitar if we need to do anything with it? Um, but they actually have a carbon D tube down the middle of the neck. And we've talked in length about this earlier this past year uh, when we made these guitars. Um, and we kind of pushed all of our chips into the table on this one and said, I think that this is gonna work. Um, if it's good enough for Ken Parker, it's good enough for us. <laughs> and it's been really awesome. So obviously we've delivered many guitars and uh, some of them have been in the cold white north. Uh, some of them have been out west in the desert. Some of them have been here in Florida where it's humid and hot. And every single guitar and everybody who's gotten a guitar has just commented on how well they play. And they're just super, super, super stable. Um, heck, these guitars we had at an event this past weekend where we were outside the whole time and it was, you know, windy and in the 30s and they were on display and never once did they go out of tune. They've just been super awesome. So. I feel very, very confident knowing now, because we have some real world examples that these guitars have gone out there, that the D-tube is just, it just kicks butt. It's awesome. And the fact that we don't have to mess around with the truss rod is just absolutely killer. I know that there's gonna be people who no matter what we do are gonna say, no, you gotta have a truss rod. I understand that, but I promise you that in practice, the D-tube carbon neck has just been an amazing solution. Along with the dog bone Everything about this guitar, it has all of the traits of, that we like about a Telecaster, right? The simplicity of it, the fact that it's just got two pickups, it's got two knobs, it's just utilitarian as all hell, and it just plays super great. Well, this guitar has all that, plus the ability to be incredibly stable and have, in my opinion, less places on it where you can have movement or stability issues, and it's just it's just super awesome. We're just super, super happy with the guitar. So here we are six months later after we actually gave Rhett that guitar. Lessons learned, a lot of the manufacturing process on our end has been sorted out, and as we've done so, we've been really fortunate enough because of this channel to have people regularly calling us or emailing us to place orders on these guitars. And at first we were, we were allowing folks to pre-order guitars, and we quickly realized that what was happening is we were gonna end up with a situation very much like my acoustics where there was gonna be a wait list. And um, I really didn't want that. So what we actually did about two months ago is we actually closed off the pre-order capabilities of these title caster guitars. We've got people that we're building for who did pre-order. We wanted people to be able to go to a website like we're all used to these days, go straight to driftwoodguitars.com, to our electric tab and see what's available for purchase right now. When you click on it, you're buying that exact guitar that you see right in front of you. You click it, it shows up at your doorstep. And so that was really important to me that we allowed that for you guys. So with that said, everybody up to this point has been getting that awesome red sunburst that we did on Rhett's guitar. But we wanna experiment with some other finishing options for you folks. And uh, to that end, this is one of the ones that we did here. We put this awesome piece of quilted maple on this guitar and right out of the gate, Matt and I looked at each other and we went, we can't put a sunburst on that. Um, and I just think it came out super good. It's got this incredible master grade piece of quilted maple on the top and then the gold hardware. And it just, it has such a clean, classic look. I was telling Matt, looks like something Prince would play. <laughs> you know, his all white guitar. But this one I just absolutely love. And then we actually did this one that we have over here with this really awesome green finish on it. 
and uh, just another really cool look. I think that it accents very nicely with the Relic Nickel hardware that's on here and the Maple Neck, it just looks super good. We're gonna be doing a lot more of that in the future with different color experiments, but these two guitars actually are available for purchase at this exact moment. So if you are interested in getting a title caster from us, you can actually purchase these guitars and we'll ship them out this week for you if you're interested. And uh, they're absolutely phenomenal guitars. I played this one right here at a show just a few days ago and absolutely loved it. So we just wanted to give everybody at home an uh, update on these title casters. I know that they've kind of been appearing in the background in some of our videos. I'm just super happy with these guitars and uh, wanted to let you guys know at home how we're gonna be rolling out the ability for you guys to buy these in the future. So if you're interested in one of these guitars, either the blonde one or the green one, make sure that you hit us up, check out the website, and we will get in contact with you and make it all happen. But uh, yeah, hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.